Hi, in this video we will solve an example problem where we have a field controlled uh, DC motor which is connected to a uh, mechanical system which has inertia, damping and a gear pair and we have a, uh, something new uh, for the system which has an encoder which is technically the sensor which measures the angular displacement of a uh, rotating body which is connected to an electrical circuit which controls the voltage of the field circuit. This is a servo motor application. Okay, it's a very a typical servo control uh, system that you can see uh, in an uh, electro, uh, technically uh, servo uh, application. And we will try to model it from the perspective of uh, linear systems uh, modeling. Okay, good. So it's an armature control, no, it's not a field control DC motor. So armature current is constant, and we technically achieve this using a current amplifier or a current source. Okay, in that respect, we know that the torque, which is the output torque of the electric motor, is equal to Kf times If. Okay, or in the Laplace domain, we have now the torque of S is equal to Kf times. I F S. Okay, so this is the technically motor equation that we need to further model the whole system. Okay, since it's not an armature control DC motor, uh, we don't need to model the back EMF voltage. Back EMF voltage only uh, affects the armature circuit, which is not critical for us because all everything that we need from the perspective of electrical motor is this torque is equal to a constant times the field current. Okay, so. Let's talk about the field circuit. Field circuit is at a uh, resistance, inductance. Okay, so it's a technically electrical circuit. And input voltage is VC, is controlled by the uh, differential amplifier, or let's say P proportional controller. Okay, the VC is equal to gamma, which is equal to theta star, which is the desired or reference angular displacement. And theta 2 is the angular position of the uh, technically output shaft or like the output angular displacement of this electrical motor which is uh, measured by encoder okay that's nice now let's try to model the electrical circuit okay in the electrical circuit the input is vc okay and output is the uh, technically current we know that it's very easy to model it using simple transfer function and we know that okay so i f s is equal to one over Okay, that's great. So we have an inductor LFS plus RF times VC of S. Okay, that's great. So we know that this is the current. So if we technically uh, also include this torque equation, this, we can technically change it to this. Okay, so torque output, torque of S is equal to uh, KF divided by LFS, RF, VCS. Okay, so this is the transfer function from the input voltage of the field circuit to the output torque of the electrical motor. Okay, so we this technically covers the important part of the electrical circuit. Okay, we have a controller and we will deal with it later. Okay, so we have torque, output torque, and what we need to take obtain is the angular position of the second shaft. Okay, before obtaining the angular position, let's try to find the angular velocity or transfer function from the input torque to the output angular velocity. Okay, so we have an inertia here at the output shaft of the motor. Okay, so uh, the gear has inertia J1, the small one, and J2, the big one. Okay, and what we need to find is the transfer function from the input here, it's torque, and output here. Okay, so what we can do is we can use the concept of effective inertia and effective damping. Okay, that's great. So, uh, what we need to do with J1 and JR. Okay, so these are on the same shaft. Okay, they are connected on the same shaft. If JR rotates with omega 1, J1 also rotates with omega 1. It means that they are technically two parallel capacitors. They are not independent. So what we can do is, similar to the parallel capacitors, we can simply add these two inertias to obtain a single inertia here. Okay, that's great. So I don't need to use this. That's great. So this is inertia. This is an inertia affecting technically uh, on the omega-1 axis. This torque is in here. What I can do is I can reflect everything to omega 2 axis to obtain a uh, 
differential equation or transfer function uh, from the perspective of omega 2. So we know that j total times omega 2 dot plus beta total times omega 2 is equal to torque, effective torque on omega 2. So this is the transfer, uh, technical differential equation if we use the concept of reflected inertia damping and also uh, torque. Okay, so what is J total? Let's write that. Okay, J total, J total, okay, so let's write it here. J total is equal to, okay, so we don't have much space here, so just write it here, okay. The total inertia is equal to J1 plus JR, but they are technically on omega 1 axis. We need to reflect them using N2 divided by N1 square, so it is simply N square plus J2. Okay, that's great. So we computed the J total. What is beta total or beta effective? It's equal. There is no damping here. There is only damping here if you reflect that. Beta times N square. Okay, what is torque total? Torque total is equal to torque times N. Okay, so we know A or everything. Okay, so what we can find as a transfer function, okay, if we convert everything in the transfer function, omega 2s, okay, is equal to n, this n is coming from here, j total, I can replace j total, but it's very long, this is s, beta n square times torque of s, that's great, okay. That's nice. Okay, I know this and I know that. Now what I can do is I can complete the block diagram structure or at least starting uh, putting this in the block diagram framework. Okay, so I need this. That's great. Okay, let's cut it here. Okay, this is the same. Okay, paste. Okay, let's put it here. Okay, so let's also to copy the other block which is great great okay okay paste that's nice okay so i think i have torque here okay so this is transfer function from voltage to torque this is transfer function from torque to omega 2 okay that's great so they are in a cascaded form i know that okay so this is Kf divided by S times Ff plus Rf. This generates torque of S. Okay. This goes to a transfer function. Okay. And divided by S times J total plus. Okay. So let's clean this part. Okay. Beta. Beta N square. Okay, this generates omega 2s. Okay, but it has velocity, but what I need is its integral, so angular displacement. So I need to multiply with 1 over s to find my output theta 2s. That's great. I have my output, but I don't have my input, right? Because I my real input is the reference angle. So what I do is how I compute Vc. Vc is equal to gamma times theta star minus theta 2. Okay, that's great. So I need a comma here. Okay, that's great. So I have a need a difference operation. Okay, this is plus, this is minus. Okay, this is coming from the output. It's a feedback operation. And this is my theta 2 star of s. Now I completed all of my transfer function. What I need to do is Using the uh, feedback uh, topology, uh, I can compute the final transfer function. Let me write the final transfer function. If we technically plug in everything that I know, we computed gamma times kf times n divided by j total. Okay, that's nice. Lf times s cube. It's a third order system, so expected. j total. Okay, rf plus beta n square times lf s square plus it's long beta total well, so let's write it 
instead of beta total, beta n square r f times s plus gamma k f times n. Okay, as you can see, we computed the transfer function from the reference angular displacement. It's a reference, it's a desired quantity, and to the output, which is the actual angular displacement. Okay, it's a very fundamental uh, P control, proportion control based feedback loop. We have a desired input and we have an output. We take the difference, we multiply with a constant, we feed to the system. If this equal to this, there is no input, which means that I am on the desired position, I don't need to do anything. If error is big, I apply a big input, which is voltage. Okay, if error is small, I apply a small input, which is the fundamental feedback topology. It has been widely used in many, many uh, control systems. Uh, in your daily life. It's a very typical simple control loop. It, it's very useful uh, for that reason it's useful in many aspects. There are some limitations. We will talk about that later. Uh, this is a simple P controller. We will technically uh, deviate from simple P controller to PD, PID and we will talk about compensators and later we will talk about more advanced control schemes such as state feedback controllers.